there's ortho and para hydrogen. I can't remember which is which, but one of those atomic, one of those states of hydrogen has a lot more energy. Just because they're they're not pointed opposite directions, the atoms are pointed the same direction. And I thought, well, this is interesting. This is another free energy process hiding in there between ortho and mono hydrogen. Uh, I mean, ortho and para hydrogen. And because it takes less energy to create para hydrogen than you get back when you when they uh, convert. How about that? And uh, that's just another one of those little free energy processes. The same thing happens, oh, when you compress it and liquefy it, it takes less energy to vaporize it again than it took to compress it. Really? It, it, in other words, when you, it, 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 you can vaporize it easier than you compress it. So you get a gain in energy just like that. And you can so do the it, same thing with liquid air. It happens quite a few times in nature, and, and yet we're, uh, we're taught to ignore that again. I don't see how people... See, I don't think it's I don't magic. see how science people can explain this stuff away all the time. I just think that, that these elements are absorbing energy from cosmic sources when they're in a state of change. And uh, because... Uh, Tesla's theory of radioactivity is that the radioactive elements are not producing the radiation. They actually are being produced by the element reacting with zero-point radiation, what he called the primary solar rays or starlight, a very high-frequency form of uh, radiation that's produced in stars. And he called this the primary solar rays, and I call it the zero-point radiation because this matches the definition today. And this radiation is ubiquitous. It comes from all directions. It's a so high frequency, it doesn't react with most matter at all. It passes right through everything. But I believe that certain elements, when they react uh, and, and change, when they're in a change of state, or let's say they're in an act of transmutation, mutation, such as in K-capture, that they react with this and produce a radioactive effect. Because I don't think they've ever proven that mass loses weight through radiation. That's that all strictly mathematical predictions. Yeah. Ah. According to E equals MC squared, if something sits there and puts out this high energy radiation, it's supposed to eventually convert all the mass, as long as it's producing radiation, into pure what they call pure energy. And that's the biggest joke I've ever seen in my life. There's no such thing as pure energy. Uh, what would be pure energy? Energy, so energy is the ability is... to do work. How can an ability have a pure form in some physical So in a way, state? it's a process of transition yeah. that creates the uh, work. It's, it's just the potential that exists. That's all energy is. It's not a physical entity any more than time is some sort of little entity flying around in space. Time is, is just a fiction that we've invented just as a convenience to describe the rate at which events occur. And, uh, and all of a sudden now we're supposed to think that it's, it, it's an entity in and of itself. Yeah, and we could travel in it, you know. Like Maybe pretty soon they'll have time particles, like they have yeah. gravitons. Uh, Timatons. Yeah. Yeah. Chronotons. Oh, yeah. no, I better not say something like that. Next thing you know, I'll be seeing it in print. <laughs> yeah, they'll think that's a great idea. Um, Tesla uh, has a very interesting take on uh, uh, iron, for instance, here. Um, he talks about uh, talks about it in terms of electricity. Uh, I'm a, let's see. Unless we should make a radical departure in the character of the electric currents employed, iron will be indispensable. Yet the advantages it, off, it offers are only apparent. So long as we use feeble magnetic forces, it is by far superior to any other metal. But if we find ways of producing great magnetic forces, then better results will be obtainable without it. In fact. I have already produced electric transformers in which no iron is employed and which are capable of performing ten times as much work per pound weight as those with iron. This result is attained by using electric currents at a very high rate of vibration produced in novel ways instead of the ordinary currents now employed in industries. I have also succeeded in operating electric motors without iron by such rapidly uh, vibrating currents that the results so far have been inferior. Uh, he has a whole different take on... Uh, now he's talking about replacing iron with aluminum. Yes. You see, now, you see which way he's moving towards something that's lightweight. And I have 
heard this before that iron that aluminum can be made to function as a ferromagnetic material. Aluminum. Yes. How about that? And you feel yeah. that Tesla might have been on, onto this? Yes, I think he might have developed this. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's, he disclosed that he had an, you know, a special generator that that. The, his description of his generator's output was so phenomenal that it's almost incredible. Uh, but he said it was composed of aluminum, iron, and copper combined in an unusual or uh, novel way. And uh, so I, I was, I've been mystified by this for quite some time. And uh, there's one of the uh, watt-hour meters. I, I, this is what you were uh, alluding to, uh, or you, you feel that Tesla was alluding to, um, this being a Tesla invention originally, where he, uh, uh, basically this is a, uh, an elaboration on his unipolar uh, generator, which he was experimenting with. Uh, this might have been one of the ultimate results of it. Could you go further into it? Uh, well, I just kind of stumbled across this with, uh, at the time Back in the late 70s, I just wanted, I had an apartment in my house, and I wanted to know how much electricity was being used internally in that one apartment. So I picked up a couple of antique uh, watt-hour meters in Albuquerque at a, at a salvage place. But these were antiques, and they were, they were, there were two 110 meters, which I've been told are very expensive now to, to get one of those kind of meters. But... Anyway, I got these for a couple of dollars a piece, and I hooked them up in the apartment. But there were no labels on what were the end, what was the end wire, and what was the out wire. These were so antique that they just had posts on there for, for connecting wires, and they were there was no label. So I just kind of figured out. Well, let's see, I'll run the end wires in here, and I'll have two of them to do 220 for this apartment. Well, apparently, I hooked them up backwards, and uh, what they would do is the meter would spin quite rapidly when power first started to be used in the apartment. And the more power, they began to slow down. And finally, they would get, when the power usage was higher, they would just sit and vibrate. And I called it snoring, because these things made a, a vibration. The whole house would vibrate with these things. I mean, really? Wah, yeah. Wah, yeah, it'd make the whole house shake. And if the power usage went up higher, they went in reverse. And the electric bill on the whole complex dropped by about a third. So these so meters appear to be electricity yeah, into the system. They appear to be generating power, and uh, so I just got to uh, when I was at a I was at a salvage place looking for some metals and whatever, in my little inventor trip that I do, and there was an old man there, and his name was Dort. And he was from Virginia, and he says my father invented, and I started talking to him about these one hour meters because we were he, he was interested. in this sort of stuff, and he says, well, my father invented the original generator that's used on highly top secret Navy subs today, and Here we uh, go with it the was subs based again. on a Tesla invention, and the Nazis stole it, and now the government uses it, and it's highly classified. And I told him about these meters. He said, when that meter is stationary and vibrating, he said, that's the center of load. He says, aluminum is the reflector, and... Uh, Copper is the active element, and iron is the magnetic. And uh, and uh, he said that that this kind of technology was in, incorporated in his father's invention, which is a Tesla oscillator. And in investigating these Tesla oscillators, he, Tesla had an oscillator in the 1890s that had a, a little piston in it that was driven by compressed air. And it only had to vibrate about a sixteenth of an inch, just hum. But the inductors, there were two inductors that were on a shaft that the piston was attached to, and these two inductors were just windings that cut the magnetic lines of force in these two big cores. And the windings were over 50 miles long in that. And uh, so that would correspond to what uh, Tesla talked about uh, 925 mile an hour, a uh, mile uh, wavelength, which would be for the Earth about um, 13 and a half cycles per second, and this is what they use for Elf 
technology. Oh, and 